Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I know you guys have been wondering, who is this guy running around here taking all these pictures of me and listening to me and recording me and all of that? Well, I'm Max Knight. I'm a program manager for the Center, Center for Health and Justice at TAS. And today I'm here to talk about racial equity in the deflection movement. Um, First, I, I stand on the shoulders of all my TAS colleagues here. And uh, the first thing I want to do is congratulate you all on a magnificent, magnificent effort. I think I joined you guys on the first, uh, after the first couple months that you had been working on this. And uh, to see the growth and to get to this point is really tremendous. So I know you're full of carbs and everything, so I think it's about time, right? This would be a good time right now to get some movement going by giving yourself a hand. Okay, so the work you keep are doing. And something else that I've noticed is that everybody's not here that was here when I first, uh, when I first took a look at your uh, movement, at your initiative. And that's just kind of natural, you know, in the scheme of things. You know, everybody is not meant to go as far as you're going. You notice when a rocket launches, you know, as, as, as Tyler has, has instructed me and informed me, when a rocket launches, the boosters fall off at a certain point. That's because they're no longer needed. It's not that they're no good or anything like that. They've done their job. They've been there for the season, for the reason that they, that they were uh, included in the mission, and that's it. And you guys are now the rocket that's going to continue to go ahead on to heavenly places. Stories told of a police veteran who became very successful. Uh, he retired and, and bought himself a ranch, and the ranch was extremely successful. He had a buddy from the service that he wanted to come and visit him. They hadn't seen each other since they had been deployed, so he invited him in, picked him up over at uh, Lincoln, Air Lincoln Airport, brought him in, brought him to the ranch. As they drove down the road that led to the actual, to his actual ranch house, his friend noticed the barn. On the side of the barn, there were several targets, and each target had bullseyes on them. And he noticed that on every single target, there was not a single missed shot. Everything was dead on, everything was exactly in the bullseye. Whether it was the bow and arrows, whether it was the pistols, whether it was the rifles or the shotguns. Everything this guy shot, he noticed, hit the bullseye. He was like, man, how did you manage to do that? You did not have those kind of skills when we were uh, when we were together in the service. How did you manage to learn how to shoot like that? The guy said, oh, it was easy. He said, first I shot, then I painted the target around the holes. <laughs> and what we're here to do today is to help you to make sure that you stay one target that we don't have to go back and, and paint a target around the holes. We're gonna be, we're gonna hit bullseyes every single time. Let's start off with a couple of uh, de definitions, because I know words mean different things to different people. Diversity, that's where we intentionally include all members from every sector of the community that we serve in our initiative. We want to make sure that, that the actual leadership team, the deflection team, it reflects those who actually need and are receiving the services. Diversity is about the initiative, okay, the actual initiative, whereas Equity, on the other hand, is about the people being served, the people receiving the services. Equity is about giving the fair opportunity for everybody that needs these services to be able to access them. For so long, for so many years, that just was not the case. But with the, with the invention of deflection, you know, now 
people have, people who need the services have access to them. We discovered these elements in the process of our research. We discovered that to find out whether or not your initiative was to monitor and maintain racial equity in your initiative, there's a few things that you have to do. Self-assessment, you have to take a look at it. Look at the positions. See if those positions, the people in those positions, match the community that you serve. Secondly, rely on the data to see that the rely on the data to see if those being served are the ones that actually need the services. Do they have access to those uh, services that you all are providing? That's how you do it. This is what you're going for. This is the goal right here. And we challenge you to make sure that these steps are in the initiative. Leadership has to include all groups impacted by substance use in the community, by those who use the substances, by those who have the mental health issues, by those who really need them, we need to make sure that they are included in the leadership of the initiative. Secondly, the deflection team, the ones that go out there, you know, to service the, uh, the individuals, they need to reflect those same groups. If they don't, then they better have a plan that is specific to the groups that they're serving. People like to see and people gain trust when they see people that look like themselves or that understand what they're doing, what they're going through. Next, the team has to be deployed in the areas where your greatest needs exist. Take, when you're doing that self-assessment of your initiative, make sure that where your overdoses are, where your substance users are, where your mental health uh, people are, um, make sure that that's who's being served. That's where your teams are being deployed to. Finally, all the services that are available have to be accessible by all the community groups whether it be case management, whether it be uh, uh, providing food boxes, whether it be helping somebody get a home, uh, get them off the street, whether they need treatment, whether it's detox or, or treatment bed. All of those services have to be accessible to all groups. This has come over time. We discovered in that same research that Corin talked about earlier, not only did we find that by giving those services way up, okay, in those in the intercept model, by giving those services way earlier, not only do we help those individuals stay out of the criminal justice system, but we also realize that there is a huge disparity among a, a huge racial disparity among those who have been, who are in the criminal justice system. Deflection addresses that. Deflection curves that. And it curves those people who don't need to be in the criminal justice system into the community services systems that they really and truly need. Over the years, we discovered that distrust has been built, not just by one group, not just by one individual, okay? Not just by one particular agency, okay? You got Max who will not go to the police station because every time he's there, he's in handcuffs. And he's been there 20 times and they've never helped him. 
We've got the police who have, arre who have arrested Max and said Max is never going to do anything. He's never going to be anything other than the drug user that he is. We've got treatment who says Max has been here 20 times and he still doesn't get it. Why should we continue to allow him in here? He's not going to do anything. He's not going to get this. Then we got Max who says, why should I even bother to go to treatment? Because I've been in there so many times and they still haven't helped me. You got Max over here going to get a box of food at the local uh, food pantry. And they're sneering and snickering and jeering at him in the background. Saying that's all he does is he, he gets his check and he, he, he uses it up in drugs and then he comes here and begs for food. Then you got Max who says, man, I don't want to go to that food pantry. I'm scared to go over there, man. All they do is talk about me and laugh at me. So we got this distrust all over the place. And it's been there for a long time. What do we do? How do we, how do we deal with that? First thing is we have to get to know the degree of trust and distrust within the community that we're serving. We continue to invite those people to the table who can tell us, who can give us that information. We spend a couple bucks down the line to form a focus group that, that is completely impartial to, to everything else. They have no opinions. They just they are just there for the data, just to give you the data. Finally, we build trust through robust and honest conversations. By talking with each other over time, by talking with the experts, talk, and I'm talking about the experts in the community, what the regular everyday people that live in the community, the people who you're serving, Continue to show up you know, at, 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 at your meetings, at your community groups. That's how we rebuild this trust. A couple of sources, a couple of resources that can help you to, to, to do that are listed right here. One is from the uh, Bureau of Justice Assistance. The other one is from PTAC, uh, which Jack mentioned earlier. You can feel free to scan the QR codes or we'll give you information, more information on those afterwards, after we're done. I don't know about you all, but I'm a pretty big movie buff. I love going to the movies and I like getting there early, a little early. Because when you get there early, you get to see this thing called previews of coming attractions. These are the hot clips of the upcoming shows. Now, the movie itself may not be nothing, but you never ever know that by looking at the clips, because the clips are hot. They're either the fight scene, the chase scene, or the love scene. But they're hot, and the whole purpose is to make you want to buy a ticket to the whole show. That's the whole purpose of these, of these previews. Well, guess what, see? When you go out and you, you decide instead of arresting Max for the 20th time, you're going to refer him into treatment, help him to get the help that he's been needing for a long, long time. You are a preview of coming attractions. You are the hot clip of the upcoming show. When you help those women get back home, get reunited with their children, you are the hot clip of the upcoming show. When you finally, finally get, get Max, who's been homeless as long as you've known him, into a place, of into his own residence, and a job to be able to maintain it, you're the hot clip of the upcoming show. And your job is to make that clip so high that everybody's going to want to buy a ticket to that upcoming show. And they're going to come to you and ask you, hey, man, I want to buy a ticket to that show. Your response, you don't have to buy a ticket. The price, through deflection, 
has already been paid. 